VIP Access access. with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access. I'm excited to bring you another wonderful show today. And we're speaking about copyright and orchestra. And it's none other than my friend Wandiri Karimi, who's an amazing individual, amazing singer, amazing boss lady, (laughs) and most recently took up orchestra. And, you know, is empowering females especially. So it's been uh, so amazing to see you do what you do. And thank you so much for coming to my podcast, Wandiri. Thank you for having (laughs) me. I've just been watching and being like, when shall I be? So when you called, I was like, yay! Mama, I made it. That's what I thought. Right? I was waiting for the right time. Oh, and it's the perfect time. Right? And we've been talking from last year. You've been working very hard towards a very important all-female orchestra show coming up just here around the corner, March 8th. You know, it's not a one-day affair, but a couple of days. Yes. Yeah. How has that been, you know? Do I start at the beginning? Start at the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) Always start at the beginning. start at the beginning (laughs) because it's a really, well, not a really long story because I I started music as a very young person. My brothers um, were part of a scholarship program for music. And so because my brothers were learning music, I ended up starting learning music when I was six. So then, um, and I was learning because they were learning, so there were books in the house and I read them. <laughs> that, that's what <laughs> happened. And then I finally got some lessons. But as I grew, um, I studied guitar. So that's my instrument. So I'm a guitarist. That's, that's, that's the thing I do. But a lot of the times I was the only female person on stage as, a, as, as an instrumentalist. Because when I say I'm in a band, everyone is like, oh, so you sing. Guys, just because I am a woman doesn't mean I <laughs> sing. I mean, I could, uh, but I don't. Yeah. Um, and 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 so being the only woman on stage was was lonely. But also there were certain things that were happening to women. I could and I could see them mm. happening. So there would be female musicians who the whole, your whole band is is um, is guys, and the guys just decide they are going to be. Guys, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 those opportunities and the kind of the kind of um, discrimination, the kind of challenges that you have as a woman. So when I met um, Kezia, who who we toured with, we were on a tour with the conservatoire in at the coast, and we had a conversation about how it was because at the time she was the only uh, woman on the conducting team, and then of course now I had my experiences, and we said let's let's do something for women. So March eighth, twenty seventeen, we had an event um, that we had rehearsed with women for since January, January, February, and we had a show in March. Mm. And it, we had such an overwhelming response of women who play instruments. And we were like, oh, okay, there's something here. Um, and so um, still at the conservatory, it was just a women's orchestra. But as we grew, we knew we needed to do a lot more, not just for women here um, in Nairobi or Kenya, but also on the continent. So we rebranded to the African Women's Orchestra in 20. 20- 23 last year. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And you are the founder of... Yes, yes. Together Af- with Kezia. Right. Yes, yes, yeah. Amazing, mm. amazing. So I just want to take you back mm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a history. Yeah, we do. We have a history. <laughs> like when I see you, Andiri, I always remember when we I used to, you know, just be hanging around Alliance Francaise. Yes, yes. You know, like 15 years ago, <laughs> yes. there with Saudi So. Yes. Is there are, anyone who didn't do that, that Alliance? Ca- no. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> that Kasement. A rite there. of passage. It was. You had to. Ha- you are also hanging there, <laughs> yes, you know, because I, I do remember you coming and playing the yeah, guitar, and Saudi so would be singing like. You were the coolest chick. <laughs> did you play with, did you come for Nina's gig? Nina Ogot's gig? Yes, I did. So we were rehearsing in yes, that space. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I remember you playing and Saudi so singing. I just yes. don't remember um, where exactly, yeah, but was there was a creation yes. that was being done. Wandiri yeah. was very present. Yeah. yeah. You know, in those <laughs> days, Saudi so were also looking up to you like, whoa. Yeah, I imagine we were we were guys. Like yeah. I keep saying, goodness, there were BGVs and I was a guitarist in a gig. Yeah, but, but then you were so a... cool one day. Yeah. You know, those days, I don't know, I, I, there was no other female guitarist. If they were there, they were not um, present in the industry like yes. you were. Yeah. So you you always had this male name like, <laughs> oh, this is the best guitarist. And then there was that chick. <laughs> yes, there was hey, that she chick. She was so cool. You were there so was cool. that chick. And I think uh, for me, I, I I wanted I wanted the people who come after me to have many people who they can rely on. Of you know, course. like even just the work that you've done. I mean, you know, your your history, everybody has been watching. Like I said, I've watched you since the days of Grapevine. <laughs> <laughs> but um 
you you know there there are spaces where if you're you're a woman then you don't have other people to yeah. to look up to you know because even if you're doing PR there are many women in PR but you know the challenges are more or less yeah, the yeah, same yeah. Yeah. but when you have more of us then it means I can give you a call and I say oh uh, Ivy Alexander I'm sure you know her like when she started playing I was like this is this is this is really cool and then more and more mm. uh, women have been in fact now I see more women in bands than I've seen before. Forget Flower Project. I mean, there's women playing as, as there's a bass player in this band, there's another bass mm. player in this. And it's not the same people because it used to be a group of like five, six yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. But now there's just a lot more women who are who are taking that um that quote unquote odd, odd, odd choice to yeah, be yeah, an yeah. instrumentalist. Yeah. But it really, it really isn't. Because if you if you, if the opportunity is there for women to feel comfortable in a space, because for us, uh, for Kezia and I, the, the thing is to create a safe space for women to express themselves. And when you give that opportunity, we don't, we don't, you you gain confidence, of course, then you of course the opportunity is there. So even if other spaces have refused you, you sign up, you come and we'll give we'll give a space to that so that you get the experience of being on stage, you get the experience of playing with others because even the vibe around like rehearsals with the women is it's sublime. <laughs> like sublime. Wow, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, love it, it so much. I do. Listen, I, do. I love this for you because I've seen you um, in various faces, yes. when I met you that one, Diri, you know, mm -hmm. you are the musician, yes. guitarist, yes. touring, playing, mm -hmm. performing here and there. And then there was another era where you also, on the other side of you, you are a very excellent copyright mm -hmm. uh, lawyer, mm -hmm. professional. Mm -hmm. And you've been very instrumental in helping me, even in some issues here mm -hmm. and there. Helping everyone, you know, I, people always call me. I'm like, just talk to Andiri. I'm a June Gashui. <laughs> yes, imagine, you know, I actually worked with June uh, once um, for a year. But I think um, for me, even the the choice to do intellectual property as as my specialization was deliberate because I said, look, I like this music thing, and I was doing law. In fact, I decided I was going to do music when I was in law school. Mm. But then, of course, parents. <laughs> my, my 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 dad was like, okay, so you've done you've done the law, which I chose. I mm. wasn't. I wasn't forced to do law. I wanted to do it. Then how are you going to make this law thing and this music thing mm. work? Because you see, ordinarily, um, the assumption is music is the thing you do when you're not doing other things. But for me, music was a choice I did first. Mm. But then I, I I had to be strategic about how I did it because why is it at, at the time when I was starting, because this is early 2000s, I said, how do we make it viable for a musician mm. or an artist or a creative to do the thing that they are doing and be, and it is profitable and it makes sense. So intellectual property is, is how people, you know, monetize and that this is these are the conversations that we need to have. And so um yeah, so I did my my masters and and somehow I've always gotten opportunities to be in the rooms that I need to be in because then I speak not just as a as a as a, a legal mind but also as a creative mind and that's why I've I've done both at the mm. same time um it's enjoyable I enjoy my life I don't have to wear dark suits all the time yeah I'm okay in print <laughs> and, and 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 enjoying being yeah. around creative people um who who of course enrich your life but then if I can be part of what makes uh, Saudi souls are successful. Ivy Alexander are successful. Whoever it is who's in the industry and the person not yet born who who is wanting to do creative, um, the creative industry business, then then I'll have done my part. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And then after that, then came this conservatoire. Yeah. Um, and I want us to go step by step. So, yeah. what does the Kenya Conservatoire of Music do? So it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a music school. So it was created for 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 um, theatre kindred arts. That's what they called it: kindred arts, music, <laughs> and dance. I love that yes. kindred arts. Uh, apparently, that's Ooh. what they called they called theatre in the in the in 1944 okay. <laughs> when they set it up. Actually, this year they turn 80. Yeah. So, so, but it was an opportunity that I sought because for me, it was, um, it's part of the cycle. So we, we, we all say to people, oh, I like, I like music, but how do we upskill? How yeah. do we create an yeah. opportunity for people of whatever age to fine tune yeah. what it is that they are doing? Yeah. Because even, even when you look at the, the fashion designers, fashion yes. designers go to school. 
they go to land drafting, they go to land design, they mm. go to land um, sewing, they learn. If you look at, um, at, at engineers, they go to school. I mean, doctors go to school. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was learning what that um, education element would be and how how best we can support that education element that will then help the other parts of it. Because I keep saying, if you go and you walk into a room and someone says, Niko Natalanta Yaku, heal hearts, and the guy tells you, I'm a cardiologist, are you really going to be with a guy who says, Nitalanta Nikonayo, or somebody who's actually learned yeah. and learned with others and participated in spaces yeah. that that allow them to, to practice what it is they do? So the conservator was a really, um, uh, it was a pivotal point for my career. But I, I like to think that um, some of the work that I did there, of course, I, I four years was before COVID and then two years. And my last two years was the, the last two, the, the years of COVID, mm. which was also. Um, so, 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 so you were the director of the for conservator. Six, for six years. Six, for six years. years. For six Quite years. Quite some time. Yeah, it was Quite some, time. some time. And to me also COVID, the COVID period was a big lesson in how creative businesses are very reliant on the way of life that we yeah, had. Yeah. And and COVID, COVID created businesses, but also um, challenged businesses in very many ways. Mm -hmm. So for example, for people who make beverages, for example, beverages were drunk, whether or not we were in COVID time or not. So business did not stop for mm -hmm. beverages, right? Even if people were not going to the the drinking places yeah. they still they still sold but for for the conservatoire the you know the place was closed for a bit of time for musicians the guys went online they were doing lives they were doing all these things mm. but the business model that um that institutions had was really disrupted by mm. covid and so we we have to think about how to create businesses that are not so reliant mm. on you know people meeting and i think it was a good thing because the year before for the women's orchestra in 2020 the co-founder uh, kezia was in malawi at the time and so she she organized the the a show that she did not she did not attend which was our fourth edition yes 2020 was our fourth edition in kenya yes but she was in malawi so we had an online experience of leadership before 2021 and 2022 wow. so for for us i think that that was a was was a was a was a learning a learning experience mm -hmm. which we applied in 2021 and 2022 for the women's orchestra yeah and my thinking also is we we also think very very locally in the way we do things uh, and it's possible to do things with people outside the country so like in 2021 we had a performance by a ugandan um two ugandan sisters so they played a piano duet so they recorded it and sent the recording and we played the recording oh, wow. as part of our uh, of our, our show in 2021 so like there, there are certain things that we learned over over that period of time um, that that yes were challenges, but now you know sidestepping and finding ways to to make them work, mm. and 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 that's part of the things that I think we want to work on and create opportunities not just for women here. Yeah, fantastic! Yeah. Oh my god! So this all female orchestra mm. show yes. Yes. in March. Yes, how many women are we talking about? Well, um, I mean our, our highest sign up um, in the years that we've had has been a hundred women who wow. signed up. That's crazy. Um, I think twenty twenty two we had yes twenty twenty yes twenty twenty two we had a hundred women on stage twenty twenty one we had all, all the all the instruments. Yeah, all can the can instruments, we list yes. some like <laughs> like um, cello. cellos? I think there's a year we had two double bass player cellos cellists are always many. Yeah, <laughs> we had one I think that had about thirteen thirteen cellists, um, and we we just look to provide opportunity to everybody. Um, we are very keen to also have African instruments in. And so um, we've, we've, we've partnered always with uh, Motra, which is more than traditional dramas, the, the, the outfit. Oh, with they are amazing. They are amazing. And they dance too, right? Yes, they yeah. dance too. <laughs> and, and, and trying as much as possible to, to create um, unique experiences where we are putting them together. So Motra will join the orchestra and play something together. Wow. Like when we did uh, Fena's, uh, Fena's year, which was 2022, we did Fena and like the Motra dramas were also part of the like drumming um, ensemble that was mm. part of her, of her, 
of her of the song Showcase, that we do, yeah, yeah. for that one we did for her. So yeah, so we 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 numbers vary because we also have but a hundred are quite a lot. Yes, we quite have a lot. that number of yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you put choir and you put the, the drummers and then the, the orchestra itself. It's a big community. It's a big community. And there's more. There's more. I mean, there were, there's one born every day. <laughs> <laughs> there's one born every day. And I think what I didn't know and what I didn't realize is guys just need an, an opportunity. Mm. And and one of the things, for example, even rehearsals. So we rehearse January to February. So rehearsals are happening as we speak. Um, but we even have to move. Rehearsals used to end, well, while we were at the conservatoire, rehearsals used to end at 6.37. Mm. But we had to move our rehearsal time earlier because it's women. Because they have to get home by seven. Yeah. You know, in January, the yeah. January to March, the, the time when the sun goes down is a little earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, so you move your time because you have to think about the mm. safety of the women, have to think about people getting home because uh, the, the, their caregivers will have issues about their daughters getting home late, yeah. their wives getting home late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, so those, those, are, those are considerations that men never have to think about. Yeah. So that means if that opportunity is not there for a, a, a woman who will... Who, will, who has kids to go cook for, uh, who has to get home early. And even, to, even if that consideration is not there. Yes. Then she will not take the opportunity if rehearsal is ending at yeah, night. Yeah. So, and you know, those are, those are and, and people don't think about it, but it's actually a challenge we have to think about yeah, when, yeah, we, are, yeah. when we, are, we are planning our rehearsals and planning the kind of activities that mm. we do. Yeah. So even going out of town, how do we how do we ensure that we are going out of town and ensuring safety? So um, like past years, what we we'll do is um, people would have to go home by cab, hmm. and it's it's an expense. You have to consider how because yes, people can go home by mat, but because you had come for African Women's Orchestra, we have to ensure that you got home safe. Yeah, because that that safety is such a big thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so what what's happening from the eighth? Because there are yes. a series of Event. events, yeah. even workshops. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So we we partner with with um, with um, different organizations. Um, so for us, we have workshops. So uh, workshops for the woodwind workshop. For woodwind is uh, flute, <laughs> saxophone. I've <have> never <laughs> had that. Yeah. Woodwind. woodwind. Yes. Today we are learning new yes. instruments. <laughs> flute, uh, wow. saxophone. So we have we have a workshop. For There's them. also a trombone, right? Yes. Now that's brass. Okay. <laughs> yes. So brass. <laughs> I know something. Brass trombone. There's also trombone what did puppet. Chimano used to play? Chim I don't know. Chimano used to play something. I think it was a saxophone. Oh yeah. Then that it was a saxophone. Wind, yes. Okay. So trumpet, uh, trombone, and um, you know the 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 horns, French horn. Those are now brass. Mm. And then we have uh, strings. But you have lower strings and upper strings. Upper strings are violins and violas, which which are the ones people play mm. <laughs> like that. And then cellos are lower strings and double bass, which is it looks like a violin, but then yeah, <laughs> yeah it's bigger. And, and obviously they're violins. And violins, yes. So that's upper strings and then the lower strings mm. is the cellos, the ones that you put on the ground and 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 play while seated and or standing. So, so the workshop is like um a training we, of yes, sorts. Yes, a training of sorts. Because I think one of the things is um playing instruments, like being an instrumentalist can be very lonely because you learn by yourself sometimes. Well, you learn from a teacher or you learn by yourself if you're learning online or whatever mm. way that you're learning. But then you get to play on your own and you rehearsing in your room or in school or in, in whatever uh, space that you have to rehearse. But then when you sit with somebody else who is more skilled and who has done more than you or does it differently, because sometimes the workshops are not necessarily with experts. It's mm. just somebody who's developed um, a, a certain are passionate about a certain thing. And yeah, it's not yeah, necessarily yeah. Um, just with people from, from, from elsewhere, even people within. We've mm. had uh, workshops with um, Ken Whitty, who, who runs chamber music. It's a whole um, uh, outfit for, for advancing classical music. So he, he, he decided to study a string for a bit and he did a workshop for the women's orchestra some years back uh, mckinley i think you know he yes, did one with the brass yeah um i think that was 2021 so we we whatever expertise we have here because i call i call the guys who support us our allies the allies always come up and they always have have time 
to to support what we are doing mm. because it's not it's not everybody who has a problem with 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 women being in the space there are people who really want to see women shine and and these allies that I'm talking about um do come and support especially when they are when they have a skill that they want to share and they are able to 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 um support us on mm. they do come and do that hey yeah. that's amazing <laughs> yes yes yeah i'm looking wow, forward yeah. well done yeah. well done yeah. i i just really love this because obviously i love i mean those who are following this podcast even the introduction says i'm a lover of arts culture yes, and yes. everything african mm -hmm. but then that's the thing like our culture and even our music industry doesn't exist in one form you know I th feel like classical music is part of it, but it's for a long time kind of been on the side, you know, exactly. just by itself. And exactly. it's like that community. But I feel like what you're doing, what you've been doing and this kind of events, this kind of workshops opens it up to the rest, you know. So some people who might not be playing or no, don't know this is an opportunity to enjoy the music, exactly. see if your child wants to learn, see if you want to take some lessons. So I think what you're doing is very important for the culture and for our music industry. Yeah. And I think we'll also expose these artists to bigger opportunities. Yeah. What are the opportunities for, for you know, classical musicians, um, you know, in the region mm -hmm. and even abroad? Are there some who are touring or playing with other mainstream artists to bring in different elements? Because mm -hmm. I see Blinky most times has a horn section. Yes, yes, Saudi yes. Soul yes. as well. Yeah. I think Cook, Cook Studio, I think, did a thing yes, where they, yes. they, had a, they had a section. I think even um, Sage did a, an event where she had a, a section yeah. of, of musicians. So um, for us, um, the, the, the opportunities for me, even some I didn't know. Um, when in 2020, we had a young... Um, she was 13, no, wait, she was 12 at the time. So she started music, I think, at 9, 10. And she ended up after our event in 20, 2019, actually. Mm -hmm. She then got a scholarship to a school in... in um, in the UK mm. called Chetam. So she did, she, she, she's of course a brilliant violinist. So it was her first solo with an orchestra. So she was amazing. So we did a solo um, with her and she's in Chetams and possibly she'll be finishing school, I think in 2025, 2026, I'm not so sure. But she, she's, this, she wanted to be a violinist mm. and, and she studied on her own with, with a teacher, with a teacher from abroad. And, and she's ended up in the UK as a Kenyan violinist. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, she's in a music school and whatever happens for Charlene, her name is Charlene Obara. Um, we are just watching and, and waiting and hoping as, as soon as she can, she can come and do another solo with us. Um, Nanjala Musundi is another one. She's just joined Manhattan School of Music as, as a piano major. So she played with us in 2019 and 2020 as, as a solo. She played music. Like, I mean, just her, her piano. And I think she's finishing her first year this this year in 2024 yeah but mm. a brilliant pianist very nice human being the first time she played with us she had just turned 17 i mean she was 16 turning 17 mm. and it is it is brilliant to see i keep saying this gen z will show us things Where? <laughs> They'll show us things. The level, and I'm the, the level of skill and, yes. and just talent they have. Yes. We used to have that at the age of 30, but this is like <laughs> a 15 year old or 14 year old. And they're doing it unapologetically. Yeah. So that's for the thing. Charlene, for, for Nanjala, and for others that I don't even I don't even know and I will I'm yet to meet. There, there are opportunities for school. Oh, yes, the, our head of, of, of Woodwind, um, she, the, both Flotis Sweeney, went and did a uh, master's in the U.S. and she's doing her Ph.D. now. Um, our head of, then she passed on to somebody else. And so now Mwende um, is in Czech Republic in Prague in a conservatoire there. And these are just wow. musicians. Yeah, like there are people just going out and, and doing their thing and they'll come and they will do their thing because... You know, Gen Z is always teaching us things. So if that opportunity exists, because I, I don't think music is a, is, a, is a continent thing. I don't think it is a, where you're from. It is just something that you have. Mm. And I think you can give an instrument to a child anywhere. Mm. And they, if they have the talent and if it's meant for them, they will amaze you in the things that they will do. So so when, when do you um, advise that mm. in parents can start 
experimenting with the instruments with the children and how do you know whether to try a flute or mm. a piano or do you think it's actually a matter of taking a child to le versatile lessons and yes. then you see what they like? It, that, that's exactly okay. it. Because I feel, um, so like I have Sam's and one of them likes, likes both of them started music classes but one of them is more is more into oh, the music. They're music ready taking. They, yes. Of course, they're taking music classes. Yeah, of course, they had they had, they had <laughs> and no their choice. father yes. is also a music person. <laughs> yes, so like, yes, yes. yeah. So, <laughs> but he, he I started one at six, seven about, okay. and started the other one about at four. You'll tell me where you took them. You know, no, they were at the conservatory. It's, <gasps> a, good, it's a great it school. It's just, just, just the conservatory. There, just, just conservatory. <laughs> but then there are the music schools also. So it's just what works for you, um, mm. lo location wise, and and also teacher wise. I think when a when a child because you know there are people who do music because they are forced mm. <laughs> they, are, they don't do it because they want to they do it because they are forced I think you should let your child lead okay. lead um, what it is that they want to okay. so um, so because I have guitars at home and now a cello um, because I started learning cello because it's so cool <laughs> <laughs> but um, when when the access is there then they will they will work on whatever it is that they, that brings them joy mm. um, but then I always say uh, a harmonic instrument is uh, is is a good one too. And harmonic instruments play many notes at the same time. So piano, guitar, those are good instruments that are bass bass instruments. Mm -hmm. And then melodic instruments, you know, play one note at a time. So you know your brass instruments, your wood wind instruments, those ones are me the whole thing for blowing into something to remove sound is it's a lot draining. of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I'm like, how, where'd you get all the air? <laughs> yeah. But there are people who just pick it up and it's a thing. Yeah. So, and I, I think not closing, um, you don't close the the the, the option. Mm. And there are many people doing amazing things in, in all the spaces. Um, Art of Music is doing what they're doing with Ghetto Classics. Um, um, there's a there's an organization called Brass of Africa, Brass for Africa that's doing amazing things in Uganda. In fact, we had a Ugandan uh, trumpet player come and join us in 2019, mm -hmm. and then um, actually she's comes from Uganda, but then she's she's from DRC Burundi. So she joined us last year when we did um, Mayonde with Mayonde. Mm. She she came and she played and did a workshop with with the trumpet um, trumpet team. So there's just there's many people doing the thing that that is they are passionate about, mm. and I think when what I've learned about collaboration, it 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 brings opportunity, but it also creates um, it creates the the firing things that you need between the organizations. Yeah. So Brass for Africa had somebody come, and then of course it benefited our trumpet, uh, our brass section. Um, out of music, a lot of musicians who play for Ghetto Classics also played for the Women's Orchestra. So mm. they are playing for the, the, the orchestra for Ghetto Classics, but they're also playing for us. They supported us with some instruments in 2023. So there's just a lot of, you know, marrying mm. of, 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 of um, um, resources and, and that kind of support, yeah. Wow, you, you seem to be deep in this <laughs> era of your, <laughs> like, classical music yes. advancement and just champion this. Yes. I love it, Wadiri. But then Diri. also, for me, when, we, when so, like, the people who we featured, when we did Mayonde and we did, um, we played two of our songs, so one of our songs in 2023, one of her songs was in a movie, Katikati. Mm. So there was already an arrangement that we yes. asked for, for for permission to use. And she sang that song and it was wonderful because it even had a guitar part I got to play. <laughs> and then um, and then we arranged Nairobi and we sang with, so we also collaborate with choirs. With, we've collaborated with uh, Red Forth uh, Chorus who sang with Mayonde. And it's just, you, you watch things just just become something yeah. else and and um had dance factory kenya come and and you know do moves and dances with 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 fena in 2022 yeah. so it, like there's just so much that we can get to do together um and it's it's yes it's orchestra but Fena with an orchestra is a whole other thing, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, Mayonde with an orchestra is a whole other yeah. thing. Karuna with an orchestra is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's also putting our our African woman story in in the orchestra space, which has not which has not happened in 
any other continent. So we are in Africa, so we met as well. Wow, <laughs> we amazing, as well. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And for those who are listening or watching, if they want to be part, mm. if they want to support, if they want to collaborate, how is the how is the best way for them to reach out? We have a website. We are we are Africa Women Orc on on Instagram on on um, actually Africa Women Orchestra. Just Google. We have our uh, our page, and our page will lead you to yeah. all our socials. Yeah, amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing. Mm. I mean, I, that's it for me. Like, <laughs> I just wanted to know about this amazing show, <laughs> yeah. and everyone has to come um, watch it. We didn't even this, talk about IP. What yes. is there? Maybe before we finish. Yes, um, yes. What kind of advice would you give to anybody listening in terms of yes. IP? Because every time they hear intellectual property or copyright, yes. mm. they're like, oh my God, I'm afraid. Mm. I cannot even call a lawyer and I cannot afford. Yes. And and I think that's that's where the first mistake comes. I think one of the one of the things that it 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 pains. It pains. It pains, it pains me too. It, it pains. pains me too. Like for instance, for me, it pains me when I meet someone's like oh, we couldn't even call you because we knew we'd never afford you. And I'm like, oh my God, you would have at least called me yes. and give me a chance to t- say something because that just make that assumption. But you know, also, at a, at a mimi, I, I have to say, <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> I, to be You're honest, so I think funny. there's a fear of, 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 of the way people assume things yeah. are because there there are disputes most ip disputes are not intellectual property disputes are not really about it's not about the material it's about not agreeing or not understanding what the expectations were yeah and a lot of artists agreements because from an artist's point of view mm. my my issue is you you're you're so quick and you Let's say for like for actors, this is something I've had very many times. Mm. So you have an actor who 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 has not had work for a year, and then you go for an audition. And then you're told this is a job, and then you're told sign up araka raka raka, and you've not read the contract, you've not read anything, and you're you're signing it on set. So you've signed it on set, and then now a year later or two years later, when the thing has expired, now you're calling me and you want to fight. But then I'm just like, but you've signed. Wow, yeah. And in that tough. contract, there will be something that says that you sought legal counsel and that you're very aware that all the all the, of what the clauses mean. Mm. And there is nothing that is you're not under duress mm. to sign. So even if I wanted to help you, it's like hard. it's hard. Yeah. And there are so many free resources, so so many free resources out there that even if it's a lawyer you don't want to hire, it's okay, Sawa. You don't want to give us money, fine. It's okay. But the, there's a class I taught. Uh, uh, it's called Copyright X, and and it's a free class from Harvard. Mm. The Backman Center runs that the, that 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 class, and they've put all the twelve lectures online. And you end up um, at the at the time when I was teaching that class, it was being run by the Go Down uh, and an institution called Code IP. There's there it's a free resource. So Copyright X is online. Please go to copyx.org <laughs> and just learn or just look at because. It's a buzzword right now. Mm. And why intellectual property knowledge is important for you is the thing that you're creating, whether it's a trademark, whether it's a collection, like you you, you wear amazing collections and somebody can go and, and try and do this thing, and but they can never make it the way it has been made and how you wear it and what it is that you're, 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 you're presenting mm. here is the work of a w- wonderful artist who... Um, if, if she goes and she tra- she copyrights that that collection, then if somebody else copies it and 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 creates, then she can go and say, oh, by the way, you've copied my work. Mm. Please pull it down. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's it's it's. But also, guys, also need to realize that sometimes it is it is not. Oh, I need to go and go after that person who's copied me. Mm. I also think um, when people imitate you, then you're very clear that somebody is doing. You're mm. doing something right. Yeah, people are not copying you because you're horrible. They're yeah, copying yeah, yeah. you because you're doing something right. And the energy, the, the one one thing all people also need to understand, it's not just the cost of disputes. It is the length of time it's going to take you to take a matter through court. Yeah. So sometimes court is not court. Actually, if you ask me, is never a solution for anything. Really, it never is a solution for anything because Cause everybody I, says sue them, sue them, send a demand letter, it's, demand letter, <laughs> yes, but sue them. It's going to take you an average of five to seven years Damn, for a matter. That's to, crazy. 
in fact, guys need to go and look at when they say, oh, there's been victory against this big, big guy who sold, who, who stole my work. But look at when that matter was started so, so and you, look you, at when yeah. it ends. So you recommend just finding amicable ways of Find amicable resolving ways this resolve. dispute. Yes, yes. And, and, and the, the cost of, of getting somebody to represent you or having a conversation with a lawyer mm. who, who can sit down and we talk with another lawyer is it will take you possibly a two-hour meeting and you finish and you agree mm. but then also don't forget if a person is dodgy they will be dodgy in business they'll be dodgy and they'll be dodgy mm. if somebody is not paying you taking getting a lawyer there unless there is a reputation thing or the person is 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 um if someone is dodgy this dodgy con men are everywhere so also who you enter into contracts with is really important mm. the person who the person is only good, a uh, contract is only as good as the person who signs it. So if the person signing it is a dodgy person, then you have a dodgy contract. So don't make a practice of, if you know a guy has been uh, messing with people's yeah, money, yeah, 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 why yeah. are you entering into that contract? See, it's, this knee heartache. Yeah. You want character development. This is <laughs> what you want. You're signing up <laughs> for character development. And I think also the other thing is, I, I, I and this is to, to, Institutions that are notorious for being, um, I'm, I'm trying to use very uh, <laughs> diplomatic words, but there are institutions that are notoriously um, against creatives. They will mm. do things against creatives. But also, if you got together and you all said, we are not going to work with this institution because this institution has done one, two, mm. three. Their brand um, recognition and their brand value is so much higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I'm not advocating for Twitter keyboard warriors. I'm not I'm not advocating for that. But there is a way that you can you know um, work together and collaborate to make people do the right thing. Mm. Also, because corporates, of course, are are very keen on having uh, a very squeaky clean yeah, yeah, yeah. outlook. But if I don't tell you that this corporate did this to me, and I don't tell my neighbor this corporate did this to me, then how are we going to uh, um, how are we going to then achieve yeah. where creatives get paid for what they need to yeah. do, you know? Yeah. And this happens a lot, especially mm. to visual artists and yes, digital artists exactly. who create work, put yeah. on Instagram, yeah. then it goes and it's reprinted and, I don't know, republished or painted somewhere on top of a wall of a building or something and without credit whatsoever. Without credit, without anything. Yeah. But then you, you, then you say, ah, it has happened to me. But then yeah. all you need to do is engage and engage and they are affordable lawyers. Yeah. Yes. And I think another thing we we will both advocate in yes. this podcast is also mm. let's um, try and give credit where it's due. Yes. Because yes. even for us in the PR world, yes. we do work with various photographers and, yeah. and videographers. You yeah. send the uh, pictures and videos to different media yes. and you say please credit the photographer they go print something somewhere they don't credit and usually when they put their own pictures you see courtesy of this newspaper so I'm like how comes you use the pictures we sent you but on, a, on a newspaper or whatever and you did not credit this photographer and then they tell you, know? you that it's policy we just say pull in fact, they, they, what I've seen yeah, is okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have said those kind of things before. And and for me, it's it's even even when yeah. I post on my Instagram, and especially when I know it, the the photographer is a photographer, yeah. I will say who took the photograph. Yeah. Yeah. Not because um, you know sometimes it's my phone, so that one I won't. Yeah, edit. yeah, yeah. Or sometimes, but even when when somebody else maybe used the phone or somebody else took a photo mm. with me or for me, then I will credit that for that person right. because they took it for me. So it looks that way because maybe Nisimu unachowa to a big phones that that wash away scenes. Yeah. But you know, because you maybe someone will assume, hey, that that Chinese phone of yours took a no 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 it wasn't my phone. It was a Nico who took the photo. Yeah. So she has a skill but yeah. also akona simu yanguvu because I don't know if you have an endorsement. You know there's a way we can continuously make people know that what they are doing matters mm. because cre creativity really does matter. Yeah. Wow. I mean, thank you for your very kind counsel mm. advice. Mm. And even I've learned so much, like before you think of 
suing someone yeah. are there ways that you could resolve this dispute but yeah. before resolving a dispute are there um certain signs that you can look out for before even signing with individual companies or yeah. or uh people and sometimes people always call and say sign sign mm. i usually say at least give me a day like let me sit on it <laughs> sit on it <laughs> let me just look at it yeah and and most of the time your intuition will tell you if something is off yeah because i think uh, we don't listen to intuition enough because we are always thinking, oh, I need this cash. Yeah. But what it costs you when in, in emotional turmoil. <laughs> <Tamoil. laughs> because when you've signed something and the person refuses to sign to, to pay you for a year, for it's example. Bad. It's bad. So for that year, what have you been eating? How have you been paying your rent? Yeah. How is your car being fueled? But you signed quickly because you felt that you needed this thing. Mm. But did you really? Or did you and and yeah and, and how how would you advise creatives to go around this situation where they have to sign for something through somebody else like through the middle people and it's okay for there for there to be middle people mm. I own an agency mm -hmm. an agency can also sometimes be a middle yeah. person yeah in in a sense that um, we have been hired by an, a, a corporate organization yes. mm. to run a campaign yes. with influencers so we have to get paid a full a full amount yeah. and then we have to subcontract the people yeah but I've heard from the industry a lot of people didn't get their payments from these agencies or this kind of people so I'm wondering how do you deal with that because when someone told me I wasn't paid from a project from this company. I'm like, not a company of this reputation. So what, what should somebody do in that instance? I, I think, like I said, there has to be like an intuition thing, but also we have to allow, um, we have to demand better from people because I think if I know working with agency so-and-so, then you as, let's say, because for actors, actors, influencers have had like a hey, horrendous stories, horrendous stories. Yeah. Because, Agencies, there are certain agencies that act in a very, very, there's no, I don't Let's know. Let's call it Juakali way. Juakali way. Not yes. professional at so, all. So if you know Aniko's PR agency does one, two, three, then you go and you say, this is who I prefer to work mm. with. Or sometimes even mm, management sometimes also has a way of, of creating. But then also managers have been doing, um, they've been doing the most. Yeah. <laughs> managers yeah. have also been doing yeah. the most. So like I said, um, associate yourself with people who are of upstanding character. That is the biggest takeaway. That's because it. there will be someone someone somewhere doing some monkey business. It's some, and when <laughs> and when you're in a, when you're in the forest and there's monkey business, then you expect all sorts of things to be thrown at yeah. you. But if you create a tribe around yourself and the kind of clients that you want to keep and and take um because part of the reason why I say to people don't rush to court because when you're rushing to court in IP matters, unless you're going to the copyright tribunal, which is which is full of um, people who have IP knowledge, you can go somewhere and somebody does not understand what IP is. So there, there are rulings and, and judgments that are not good law in IP. So you went to court with an expectation that the law would be followed, but the law was not followed because mm. the person did not understand intellectual property in the way that it should have been, mm. uh, it should have been interpreted. interpreted. Yes. So for me, in fact, one of the things that I'm, I'm strongly lobbying for, and I hope, uh, I hope it finally happens, that we have an IP, an IP court. If we do so, then all the matters for IP, then it means if you have an IP court, then it, you just deal with IP matters and that's it. Mm. Um, and I hope, I hope it happens, but that's a whole, we are talking at then, like it's a long, long conversation unless somebody somewhere then sees the need for it and sees how it's going to benefit. Um, because everything, of course, when you're, when you're making your proposal and you're making your policies, everything has to come with, oh, how much does it cost the ex checker? And when you're dealing with policy, mm. those are all, there are all those conversations, but more so if people can, can, can buy into the idea of mediation and buy into the idea of before you get into something, know what it is you're doing and what the expectations are, then your disputes will not be many. Mm. And then if, if corporates then act right, if they act right, because you are a corporate, if you're an agency and you're not paying your creatives, why? How do you expect that person to come back next time? And yes, there's one born every day, but... If you empower whichever influencer that you're working with, mm. it means what they'll be able to imagine for the next campaign will be even better than the last. Because Definitely. they're they yeah. not worrying about rent, they're not worrying about food, they're not worrying about, you know, uh, school fees and whatever other things that mm. people are spending money on. But 
um, but there are agencies, as you know, who don't care. They, they'll just tell Uta Nipele Kawapi. In fact, it is that Utadu, that was the, <laughs> the Utadu yeah. um, way of doing things. And, and, and my hope is the more we grow uh, these SMEs that we are running into bigger companies, that our SME uh, uh, attitude and our SME SME way of doing things mm. will when we are big we are big conglomerates that we we then will act right. Mm. So I would want to work with you and you work with me, but mm -hmm. then the way we we treat each other has to be a way that now people now expect nothing less. Yeah. Because as I say, Gen Z will show us things. You think you're going to do that to Gen Zs? They will show you things. Gen Alpha is coming. We will see what they will show. We'll show. <laughs> we'll show us after that. But yeah, let's let's build good businesses. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good place to end this podcast. <laughs> yes. Let's build good businesses. Let's build good businesses. And relations, yeah. you know, collaborate. Yeah. Let's promote an environment that is healthy. Yeah. And also that is uh, gives space to yeah. different individuals, yeah. especially women. Yes, especially women. Yeah. And yet to you and everything that you're doing, every time I follow you, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> Asante. Wait, 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 wait. Asante. Yeah, Sana. and we're cheering you on. Right? Asante. Yeah. For yeah. me, I'm just so proud sitting here listening to you. The <laughs> fact that I know you... You know, and that you're my friend and I can call you anytime. Oh, you can. I just can. love smart people and especially women. So yes. thank you so much for your contribution. Mm. Um, and thank you for using all your knowledge mm. very well and, you know, being um, gracious while, while at it. <laughs> we yeah. must, we must. Because there's, there's not many of us in this space. No. And, and, and we support each other. That means we grow. Yeah. Because, and in this, these are things I'm observing with, with businesses. Like if you look at whatever's happening in, let's say even Nigeria, if you look at what they're doing in terms of, of, of creating content and, and supporting each other, they are working as a team. Yeah. So when you see them in a, in, you know, Nigerian content in, in, um, in the in the Hollywood space, it is not. They are all calling each other, and mm. they are all moving together, and it is deliberate. Yep. And I know it's been years of work, but we also need to do the same, and yeah. also join our 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 African um, siblings yeah, yeah, yeah. in doing whatever it is we need to do yeah. to 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 create the the industry that we need. It really is a collective yeah. it, effort. It, there is nobody. You can you do it alone? No, not even. <laughs> you can't. So if we get together, I really feel that our continent has so much to offer, and we 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 are so beautiful as people we have so many stories to tell we have um and everybody wants to tell our stories but we are the only ones who can tell our stories our way yeah but how do we that's our superpower it's our superpower we are like we are walking superheroes and <laughs> we are walking superheroes and and we, we sometimes we don't even see it in ourselves so if i can elevate you I'll do so. If you can elevate me, do so. And then when we can elevate each other, then when we, when we do so, we will we will we won't even believe where we are going. You mm. know, it's 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 those things that I I feel um, there should have been a class elevating one another <laughs> in primary school yeah. and we do it all the time. But you know, now we are learning now and we'll do it. <laughs> Thank you, Wandiri. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank that was you. the amazing Wandiri Karemi mm -hmm. from Nairobi, Kenya. Please check out this amazing all-female orchestra show in Nairobi starting 8th of oh, March. 8th of March to 17th of March. We have activities all through. I'm um, really excited with what, what what's in store um, and the artists in store. So um, head to our our, web, our website and you know you, you'll see amazing things. We're looking forward. Fantastic. We mm. promised you dope orchestra vibes today. <laughs> Hope you've been inspired and you can come watch this amazing show. Um, from me, Aniko and Wandiri, thank you so much. And I will be back next week with another amazing guest. Thank you. Asante, thank you for having me. <laughs> VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.